Now it's time to make butterscotch pudding. And I have to say, I'm kind of known for this recipe because I often bring it to large parties, especially if there are kids around. Now, one party in particular, tons of kids. I made a big bowl of this pudding for the children and I made some really elegant chocolate pot de cremes for the adults. And when it came time for dessert, the adults tasted the pudding and we decided we were gonna have the butterscotch pudding and the kids were gonna get the chocolate desserts because it's that good. Now, it all starts with cooking a bunch of things on the stove until it's caramelized, and that's where you really need to pay attention. So notice I have everything all prepped out, ready to go, because you really just wanna stand at the stove and watch this cook so it doesn't get away from you. All right, so into a saucepan, this is 12 tablespoons of unsalted butter that I've cut into chunks. That just helps them melt more quickly. Now we're gonna add two types of sugar, both brown sugar and white sugar, equal amounts of both, half a cup of each. That's dark brown sugar, half a cup of white sugar. We're gonna add some water, just a quarter cup of water. Lemon juice, a teaspoon of lemon juice. Salt, three quarters of a teaspoon of table salt. And last, two tablespoons of light corn syrup, which is just an extra insurance that the caramelization process will go well. So if you notice, I have this little adjustable cup, perfect for measuring sticky things like corn syrup and molasses. You can measure out what you need and then just push it into the pot. All right, that's it for now. I'm gonna put this on the stove top, medium heat, gonna let it come to a boil, and then we're gonna cook it for about five minutes. You'll start to smell like caramel, and you want it to register 240 degrees before you go any further. So onto the stove this goes. Now we're gonna cook it over medium heat till it's nice and boiling, and then once it's boiling, we're gonna let it rip for five minutes. And during that time, there'll be big bubbles, it'll start to smell like caramel, and when you take its temperature after those five minutes, it should be around 240. So this is registered 240 degrees. Time to slow it down. Turn the heat down to medium low. The bubbles are gonna subside and become more of a lazy bubble. You might smell a bit of a burnt aroma and the color's gonna deepen over time to that of a dark peanut butter. And this all takes about 15 minutes. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes. And you can see the color has really darkened. Uh, I can start to smell a slightly burnt aroma, which is perfect and it's registering 300 degrees, which is right on. So I'm gonna turn the heat off. Now we're gonna to start to add the cream and the milk, but I'm gonna add it very carefully so that it doesn't boil out like a volcano. This is a cup of cream total, but I'm just gonna add a quarter cup of it now. <laughs> that is sizzling in there. So I'm gonna use an immersion blender to help incorporate that cream into the caramel. If you don't have one of these, not a big deal. You could just whisk the heck out of it. Oh, that smells amazing. All right, now you can see what a difference it is. It is a nice, smooth caramel where before it looked a little broken. Now it's nice and emulsified. Back on medium heat it goes. Now we're gonna add the rest of the liquids, including the rest of this cream. Whisk that in. And now we're gonna add some whole milk. That's two cups of whole milk. <laughs> all right, so all that cream and milk is in the pot. Now you just wanna take a whisk and really get into those corners. Make sure there's no hardened caramel left behind. All right, that's good. Now we're gonna turn this off while we focus our attention on the egg yolks. All right, so now time to make the custard. And here I have four egg yolks. I'm gonna put it in an oversized bowl because we're gonna whisk all the hot liquid together in this bowl and I like having the extra room for safety. All right, that's four yolks. To this, we're gonna add a quarter cup of cornstarch. Now you don't wanna mix these ahead of time. You really wanna get that caramel mixture done waiting for the egg yolks and the cornstarch. Now, last but not least, we're gonna add a quarter cup of warm milk. Now, obviously you could warm this up in the microwave if you have one, or you could just warm it up on the stove in a cute little yellow pot if you have one. So I'm just gonna temper the hot milk right into the egg yolks. Tempering just because the egg yolks are cold, the milk's hot, and you're slowly bringing the temperature of the egg yolks up so they don't cook. There we go. You can see I'm tilting the bowl just to really incorporate all of that cornstarch that's stuck to the side of the bowl.
All right, that's nicely combined. Now, time for the fun part. I'm gonna bring that caramel mixture back to a boil, and all in one swoop, we're gonna add it to this bowl. All right, so I have the pot back over medium-high heat. I'm waiting for this mixture to come to a rolling boil, and the bubbles are gonna climb the sides of the pot. But before it spills over, I'm gonna take it off the heat and pour all this hot mixture all at once right into the yolks. Not a time to walk away. Ah, here we go, it's starting. You can see those bubbles are climbing up the sides of the pot. I'm really waiting for the whole mixture to be very hot. Oh, that's hot. All right, off the heat it goes, over to the yolks. All right, all one foul swoop, into the yolks it goes. Ooh, that's the fun part. I love the drama of the steam and the smell of the butterscotch. All right, now we're just gonna whisk this constantly for about 15 seconds. Now, that hot, hot caramel, which again, you know, was registering several hundred degrees, it's causing that cornstarch to thicken, but it's also cooking the egg yolks, and both of those things is what turns the mixture into a nice thick pudding. All right, now time to add the last few ingredients, which are vanilla and a little rum, and you add them at the end because their flavor is a little fleeting, so you don't wanna cook it out during the process. So we're gonna add some vanilla, just two teaspoons of vanilla. One, two, and a teaspoon of rum. My teaspoons tend to be a little big when it comes to rum. And a little for luck. All right, you can obviously leave the rum out, but I love the flavor it adds. Oh, and that vanilla and the rum hit the hot pudding. The aroma's out of this world. All right. So now I'm gonna transfer it to a nicer looking bowl. This is my mixing bowl. Now I'm gonna put it back into a serving bowl. So here I have a nice glass bowl. Also, we have to chill this pudding in the refrigerator for at least three hours to thicken and cool. And this big bowl doesn't fit so well in my fridge, but the smaller bowl fits, fits quite nicely. So I also like making this pudding because it's so hot in a metal bowl and then transferring it to a glass bowl. That way you don't worry about cracking the glass. All right, so before I put it in the fridge, I'm gonna put a piece of parchment on top to prevent it from getting that pudding skin. And I had a little arts and crafts moment and I trimmed this parchment so it'll fit nicely on the pudding. And I'm gonna spray the parchment with a little vegetable oil spray. That just makes it easy to pull the parchment off. All right, just pressing that parchment paper flush to the pudding and into the fridge this goes, again, at least three hours to set up. The pudding has chilled and it's time for a taste test. All right, off comes the parchment. Now I'm gonna give the pudding a quick whisk, loosen it up a little bit. Oh, man, that is the perfect color. Into the pudding cups. Yes, I have actual pudding cups just for this recipe. Otherwise, I fill the glasses a bit too much and we eat too much pudding. Oh. A little whipped cream. Oh yeah. Every time I'm so surprised at how deep the flavor is. Oh, the caramel flavor, a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of rum. Mm. The best butterscotch pudding bar none. Mm. See you next time. Thanks for watching. What'd you think? Leave a comment below and let me know what you're excited to cook this week. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. You can get today's recipes and more for free at our website, americastestkitchen.com slash julia at home.